For our fourth algebra review in this unit zero, we're going to be looking at some properties of real numbers as well as absolute values. And as we know, this is all review, but go ahead and take some time to write down the description of each one of these properties, the commutative property of addition, the community property of multiplication, the associated property of addition, and the associated property of multiplication. Take a look at what that property looks like as well as understand the description that is given for each one. Feel free to stop the video if you need to and please notice the objectives after this lesson you're going to be able to identify and apply the properties of real numbers and you'll also be able to simplify numeric and algebraic expressions using absolute value. An example of the commutative property of addition would be where numbers can be added in any order. So for example, we could have uh, the numbers 2, 4, and 5 added together in any order. The order is not specific, but the result comes out the same. For the commutative property of multiplication, once again, we have commutative just means that the order does not matter. So if I multiply 7 times 3 times negative 5, I'm going to get negative 105. Or if I put those numbers out of order, 3 times negative 5 times 7, I should also get 105, the negative 105. So we're just wanting to focus on the word commutative, which means that order does not matter, whether it's addition or multiplication. When we're talking about the associative property, notice that we have some brackets, some parentheses here. And when we're talking about the associative property of addition, we can put those parentheses wherever we would like to. So let's take uh, the numbers 2, 4, and 5. If I put my parentheses here, I'm going to get 9 inside the parentheses plus 2 is 11. Or if I put my parentheses around the 2 and the 4, 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 5 is 11. So the placement of the parentheses can be anywhere and the answer should come out to the same. So associative, once again, this time we're doing the property of multiplication. Notice the dots here, but if you put your parentheses around the b times c, or if you put your parentheses around the a times b, your answer should come out to the same. So an example of that would be the number 1, and then if we multiply 2 times 3, that is 6. 2 times 3 is 6, times 1 is still 6. Or if we have the 1 times 2 in parentheses and we multiply that by 3, we should still come out to 6. You can stop this video in order to write down the description of the last four properties. The additive identity property, the multiplicative identity property, the additive inverse property, and the mul multiplicative inverse property. So we have two inverse properties and two identity properties. Let's go ahead and give a couple of examples of these. Additive identity property is where we are going to add the number 0 to any number and the number remains the same. So adding 0 to a number does not change the number. So in, for instance, negative 12 plus 0 is still going to be negative 12. The multiplicative identity property states that if you take any number and multiply it by 1, the number is going to remain 
what it was before it was multiplied by 1. So if we take 6 and multiply by 1, we still have 6. The additive inverse property states that any number added to its opposite is 0. So if we have 14 and we add the opposite of 14, which is negative 14, that results in 0. Finally, multiplicative inverse property. Any number multiplied by its reciprocal is just 1. So any number, let's say for instance the number 17, if we multiply it by its reciprocal, and reciprocal just means to reverse the lower and upper number, so we're basically flipping the number, and we would have 1 over 17 in this case, because 17 over 1 is really what we mean by when we write 17. These will cancel, and a result is just 1. And down here at the bottom of the page, I would like you to write any questions that you have about what you've heard so far in the video. So when you come into class, I'm going to be asking for any questions, something that didn't make sense. Maybe you just want to put a little asterisk next to it if you didn't understand a particular property or if the example was not clear. Please use the bottom of the page to write a couple of questions if you have any. Go ahead and turn your paper over. We're going to go ahead and practice some problems that ask us to state which real number property from the table that we just completed is being demonstrated for each problem. So in problem number A, or problem letter A, what's happening in this particular problem? Well, we have a multiplication problem going on. We have 2 times 3 and then we have 3 times 2. So we have to pick one of a multiplication properties. Is it the associative? Are there brackets here that multiply numbers together? Or is it just the commutative property of multiplication? That's what you have to decide for yourself. And in this case, it's just the commutative, I'm going to abbreviate, uh, property. And it is of multiplication, so be careful that you realize that it's a multiplication type problem. Commutative property of multiplication. Here we have some more multiplication going on, except this time the multiplication has been grouped. Okay, the type of problem that we have here where we're grouping states that we're going to be using the associative property. So the associative property, these two numbers associate with each other that are in the group. Associative property of multiplication. So I guess when you look, just make sure that you see if it's addition or multiplication, and then are there parentheses that you need to consider. Parentheses indicate associative and the ones that don't have the grouping going on those are going to be called commutative. So go ahead and take a look at these, do the best you can. There are a couple here that are the, going to be the um, identity properties or the inverse properties but I would like you to try to locate and identify each type of property that we have gone over on the front side of the page. For example number two, we have to determine if each scenario is commutative where the order does not matter or if the scenario is not commutative where the order does matter. Go ahead and explain your answer as well. So I'm going to do a couple of these and see if you can do the last two on your own. Part A says putting on your socks and your shoes. So if you have to put on both, does the order matter? If it does matter, then we would want to call that not commutative. If it doesn't matter, you can put your shoes on first or your socks on first, and that would be called commutative. Well, if you think about it, of course, you have to put your socks on before your shoes, unless you want to be some kind of a fashion statement for the day. So we would have to say that this is not commutative. You have to do your socks first. In other words, order matters here. In terms of part B, washing your hair and washing your face. Now some people might think this is real specific, um, but really either can be done first. So order does not really matter. So we would call this commutative. Anytime the order does not matter, then we can say that it is commutative. All 
I would like you to try part C and part D on your own. Make sure that you explain why you picked commutative or not commutative based on the scenario. The second topic of our notes today is absolute value. Absolute value is represented by a symbol that has two vertical lines like this. So when you see those two vertical lines, that just means that we have to come up with a positive answer. Always positive. The definition of absolute value is a number's distance from zero on the number line. So if you take a look at the number line, um, each distance is just going to be a positive distance. There's no such thing as negative distance. Remember, when you go for a walk, you don't go for a negative distance of walk. Distance is always measured in positive numbers. So how far away is negative 3 from 0? Well, we need to give a positive answer here because we see that negative 3 is in the brackets or the vertical line. So let's count this. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3 is 3 units away from 0. How far away is 3 from 0? 1, 2, 3. Both of them are 3 units away. It's just that one goes in one direction, one goes in the other, but we're not interested in positive or negative. Actually, we're only interested in positive. Zero is zero units away from zero on the number line. So using these ideas, I would like us to try some of these example problems. I'm going to do A, B, C, and D, and then I'm going to ask you to finish up the remainder of example three, and then we're going to go down and do some example four problems as well. So when we're looking at the um, part A here, we're going to simplify each expression completely. For the order of operations, treat the absolute value symbol as if it were a set of parentheses. So if we take a look at uh, part A, part A is negative 11, but really that's just 11, right, because we have to make sure it's positive. There is this negative sign in between the two absolute value sign, so we have to leave that, but the negative 29 ends up being just 29 because of the absolute value. So 11 minus 29 equals negative 18. Going on to part B, inside the absolute value we have negative 4 minus 8. Well that can really just be written as negative 4 plus negative 8. And when we're inside the parentheses, or sorry, not the parentheses, but the absolute value symbols, this ends up being negative 12 inside. But remember, because we're talking about how far away is negative 12 from 0, and it's a distance, we want to just say that it is 12. Same thing for part C. We have inside the parenthes or inside the absolute value symbols, negative 8. And then these two negative signs become a positive. So now we have negative 8 plus 32, and that's going to be a positive 24, even inside the absolute value symbols, and therefore 24 is 24 units away from 0. Another tricky one, part D here, negative 6 becomes 6 outside of the absolute value symbol. We have a minus sign that we need to recognize. This negative 3 is just going to be 3 because we see the absolute value sign. 19 minus 2 is positive 17 when it comes out of the absolute value. 6 minus 3 is just 3, plus 17 ends up being 20. Please finish part E, F, G, and H. Remember, the absolute value has to be positive. Example 4 asks us to evaluate each expression if W were 0.4, X is 2, y is negative 3, and z is negative 10. So we're going to need to replace the variable with the value that they've given us. So for problem i, we have absolute value of 5w. So the absolute value of 5 times w, which in this case has to be 0.4. Okay, the answer inside the absolute value is 2. And that is our final answer as well, because it was not negative. We didn't have to remove a negative symbol or anything like that. So problem J, absolute value of 9 times negative 3, because Y is negative 3, minus Z, which is negative 10. 
So inside the absolute value, we have to do order of operations. So negative 27 is what 9 times negative 3 is. And then we have these two negative symbols right here that become positive. And another absolute value symbol. So negative 27 plus 10. And that's just going to be negative 17 inside the absolute value. But remember, it cannot be negative. So we're just going to make that a positive 17. For part K, problem K, notice that K has a negative symbol outside the parentheses, outside the absolute value symbol, so we're going to put that on at the very end. We're going to take care of everything inside the absolute value symbols first. So inside we have 10 times negative 10, because Z is negative 10, minus 31. All right, let's do this first, and then we will throw the negative back on the outside of our answer when we're done. So we have 10 times negative 10, which is negative 100, minus 31, and this is all within the absolute values. So it looks like to me we have the absolute value of negative 131, and once we make that positive, we end up with 131. But don't forget that this negative sign was out at front, and so now our final answer is negative 131. We took care of everything inside the absolute value symbols first, and then this negative symbol on the outside gets added to our final answer. I need you to finish L, M, and N. Show all of your work, please. Make sure your answer ends up being positive in terms of the absolute value if there's some reason why you have to add the negative symbol outside or in front of your answer, then if it makes sense, then go ahead and do that. Again, I want you to write down any questions about absolute value that you might want to ask once you get into class.